Okay, everybody, it's me, Gregory Manorino, and Epic. What a day. What's going on? And we have a lot to talk about. So it is Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Let's talk about this near, near miraculous turnaround with regard to the stock market and why this happened and what is about to occur. So with regard to this market, I explained to you earlier that this market was set for a pan sell-off. That was this morning, and that did occur. At the market open, everything was lower. As a matter of fact, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down about 350 points earlier in the day. Well, all that changed. Stocks reversed, not only went positive, but the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 200 points. So we're talking about a 550-point swing in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you should not be surprised about this. I explained to you pre-market today how the market would play out. And I told you this would be a buying opportunity. And guess what? It was. And it's going to be more of a buying opportunity. Let me explain to you what turned this market around in case you don't know. Apparently, okay, this is what's being reported, an Iranian warship fired on and hit an Iranian cargo vessel. This is not good, but the market loved it. The entire energy sector was lower earlier today. The entire financial sector was lower today. Both of these made miraculous turnarounds. Crude oil took a hit today, but the market turned around in anticipation about what is going to happen, okay? This will not go unanswered, okay? There's no doubt in my mind that there will be a retaliatory strike on Iran, and that is going to boost the price of crude oil. That's what the market is pricing in right now. That's why stocks turned around, it's an, an incredible thing to watch. But look, this is more than likely just another false flag, uh, an excuse to prop up the markets, an excuse to prop up crude oil. Whether or not this really happened, you know what? We'll never really know, will we? Um, but that's just the twisted environment we are in. And we have, again, a lot to talk about. i got to summarize this kind of quickly. So miraculous turnaround here in the stock market. Crude oil finished lower. Cryptocurrencies uh, got hit. Gold and silver got hit. Uh, Ten-year yield came down. Dollar higher. I explained this to you earlier. This that fear in the market. But the market really did shrug that off once it heard that an Iranian uh, cargo vessel was hit by an Iranian warship. Loved it. Nothing like a good war to boost the stock market, market, blah, 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 the stock market and crude oil. Is there now? Oh, no. Imagine my shock. I'm shocked and surprised. Anyway, what I want to do is cover some stuff here with you people. So let's do that here. Uh, you know, this is interesting. Real quick. So major banks, including JP Morgan and Citi, <laughs> you're going to love this. You know what? Let me, let me give you a background first. For years, years, I've explained to people that the major banks have trillions of dollars invested in energy, in crude oil. We're right here. Finally, Greg Manorino is vindicated. This is the headline. Major banks, including J.P. Morgan and Citi, have invested at least $3. trillion in fossil fuels. Let me explain this to you. See this number of $3.8 trillion? It's not real. All right, if you, and this is just these banks, if you were to look at how much cash these investment banks have invested in crude oil, and I'm talking about leveraged, it's in the many, 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 many trillions, more than this country's gross domestic product. Okay, that's the truth. So you can understand the mechanism here. Whatever they got to do to prop up crude oil, they got to turn a ship sideways in the Suez Canal, which is still there. And apparently it's, it's going to take a long time. Could be weeks before it gets out. Uh, could be months if it just happens to sink by an accident. It would be a big accident if the ship sank there, wouldn't it now? Expect anything. Expect anything in this environment. 
Now here's a good one. Fidelity is going to launch a Bitcoin ETF. I'm intrigued. I'd like to see how this is going to work out here. So I will keep you posted on that one. Uh, again, this cruise ship, it's still wedged in there. It's wedged in there real deep. Uh, uh. Now here, we heard from Federal Reserve President Clarita today, and this is what he had to say. The Fed will support the economy until it's well and truly done. Well and truly done. Interesting choice of words. Here's my translation. The Fed will buy it all until they are well and truly done. And the economy will stay shut down. Oh, by the way, uh, this is just terrible. Uh, in other parts of the world, and it's going to be here too, uh, they are requiring COVID passports to enter businesses, probably shopping that's going to come soon. It sounds biblical to me, almost like the mark, you know, the mark of the beast here. You can't do anything. You can't transact unless you've got the mark. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, you know, we'll see how we'll see how that uh, how that plays out here. Let us move forward a little further. Just lovely, lovely. Oh, here we go. Here's the headline: Cargo ship blocking the Suez Canal could take weeks to move. Well, and I followed up with, well, if this thing just accidentally sinks, it could take months to move. People, look, they have the perfect setup here. Yesterday, you witnessed what happened to crude oil after this ship got wedged in, in the canal. Crude oil fell today. Then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, uh, you know, this Iranian warship fires on an Iranian cargo ship. And, uh, you know, the stock market just turns around. Crude oil stabilizes. The market is smelling something. I am smelling something. And I'm sure you are too. This is a setup here. There is no way. This is not going to go unanswered. And you can only imagine how this is going to hit crude oil. I told you, watch for a big spike. It's coming. Um, anyway, let us move forward here. Oh, this is Bloomberg. I just want to read the title. We must start planning for a permanent pandemic. Imagine how shocked I am. And, and, and Powell today, Federal Reserve President, I'm sorry, Federal Reserve Chairperson Powell compared... The action that the Federal, Re Federal Reserve is taking now to the World War II Battle of Dunkirk. Why? What's your take on that? What is your take on that? It's pretty freaking epic, if you ask me. Uh, and he also said, now is not the time to focus on reducing the federal debt. All this thing here, this is me writing, this thing. He's a creature. Talks about it. Him and uh, the other one, Yellen Creature, over the past couple of days, is increasing the debt vastly. And it's an incredible thing. And the Fed people, believe me, is not even, has not even begun to inflate. If you don't know, if you, have, you probably don't even have an idea of what's coming down the pike here. But you can see the setup here. Um, oh, by the way, just, just so you feel better about it, AstraZeneca has now revised this data and says it is their vaccine is now 76% effective and it's safe. I wonder if they mean it's uh well it's 76% effective so does that mean it's 76% safe too for a disease process that is well about 98% survivable. Oh and they're testing on infants. I will get to that in a moment here. Oh, here's a beautiful one I want you to pay attention to. So Janet Yellen, you know the Treasury Secretary, I've explained to you the, the, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury are now tag-teaming the United States and its citizens to bring it to its knees before the New World Order. Okay, I explained to those of you that believed or believed the lie that President Trump took over the Treasury. We're going to win. Duh. Told you it didn't happen. Well, here we go. Janet Yellen wants to... I'm going to read this to you. Janet Yellen pushes back on concerns over infusion of capital, U.S. dollars, into the IMF to the tune of $650 billion to start with. So the U.S. Treasury wants to just hand over well over half of a trillion dollars to the IMF. And that's just the first installment. How do you feel about that? It's great. People, things you can't imagine, like I've told you, are going to be done here to create cash out of thin air. So Yellen is pushing back on concerns about, well, people like you and me maybe are wondering why she wants to funnel over $650 billion as a first installment to the IMF.
Maybe you should ask Yellen Creature while she's got two masks on her face in, in this particular picture. Yellen Creature, I would not be sad if you suffocated to death. But that's just me. Hey, people, what have I been telling you? This is me. Between the Fed and the Treasury, they're working together to bring America to its knees. And no one is willing to do a thing about it besides you and I and maybe a few other people. They are bringing America and its citizens into total slavery before the New World Order. I think you understand that. At least I hope you do. I really, really do. Um, let us move forward. So Bill Gates came out today and in his little smirky face. And he said, we'll be back to normal by 2022. Now, my only question is, what is normal to Bill Gates? Maybe you want to let me know because I'm not that smart. Um, but Bill Gates wants you to know something in case, in case you were curious. It's micro and soft. You know Microsoft? He wants you to know it's micro. It's micro and soft. That's not my problem. Uh, <laughs> let us move forward here, people that I love. I love all of you. I really do. Oh, breaking news. Freak show Biden, who's he kind of reminds me of Frankenstein. I think I'm going to call him Frankenstein. So Frankenstein Biden pledges to borrow at least another $10 billion from the Federal Reserve to expand COVID, COVID vaccine access. Way to go, Frankenstein Joe. What a freak show. Lovely. Absolutely freaking lovely. Uh, so Rutgers University is going to require a COVID vaccine for students returning to their campus. Oh, lovely. Just fantastic here. And I, like I explained to you, Pfizer here is testing on infants. They're testing their vaccine on infants. What kind of a parent would allow that to happen? If you go to the CDC's website, I'm not going to ask you to take my word for it. Go to the, the, the CDC's website and look up infant mortality with regard to COVID. I'll, I'll just paraphrase here. It's almost non-existent. Uh, it's very rare. That's what you're going to hear uh, from the CDC. But meanwhile, Pfizer is now pumping infants with COVID vaccine. Why? Why would anyone do that unless there is some other thing going on? Ex Bill Gates, he'll, he'll, he'll be able to clue you in here. Pfizer begins COVID trial on infants. Absolutely freaking amazing. More companies are jumping on the... Here, I'll read this to you. Okay, look, I'm going to read it to you. CDC... Current evidence suggests that COVID infections in neonates are uncommon, and if they do become infected, the majority are either asymptomatic or have mild disease. So why are they injecting infants? Infants! People, this world has gone mad. Anyway, like I was going to say here, um, more and more companies, corporations are jumping on the bandwagon to give you free things if you show up with a COVID vaccination card from donuts to pot to cigarettes to free food. It's unbelievable. Free stuff. Imagine my shock. So sick. Anyway, I think I've had just about enough of this. Um, I'm, I gotta stop with this crap. All right, people, listen. I think you got the gist of what's going on here. Watch for something to occur big. I warned about it a couple days ago in the Middle East, especially off of what just happened, or they said just happened, to prop up crude oil. You saw how the stock market responded to this? You saw how the energy sector responded to it despite crude oil being down? You saw how the financial sector, the banks responded despite crude oil being down? Well, Something's going to occur, just like I, explained, like I have explained to you. They're setting it up. So it's an open book to you and me. We know what they're going to do before they do it, and it's a very dangerous game. People will die. All right, I'm out of here. Love you a lot. Please share the video.